This is the all new Sovel SV08. Basically, it's a 350 by 350 by 350 millimeter professionally manufactured remix of the popular Voron 2.4, except it takes less than an hour to assemble and it costs less than a fraction of the price. And in this video, we're going to check it out, see how it's different and ask the question, now that this thing exists, does it still make sense to build a Voron? Let's get after it. First, let's get some quick disclaimers out of the way. Sobel did send this machine over for free and they are a long-standing sponsor of the channel, but they have not paid me anything for this video and they won't see it or my script before all of you do. Additionally, because of our long-standing relationship, they have given me permission to release this video before anyone else, which means that I have not had that many print hours on the machine, at least not as many as I would like to. I also will earn a small affiliate commission if you do choose to purchase an SV08 using my link below. With all that said, I'm going to do my best to remain objective. And as always, your trust and my reputation come way before income or relationships with brands. Now, before we get into the actual specs, let's start with a little bit of background and why this printer exists in case you've been living under a rock. As we all know, a little under two years ago, Bamboo Lab dropped an atomic bomb on the 3D printing industry with the release of their X1 Carbon. All of a sudden, an entire generation of 3D printers, namely slow bed slingers with no cameras or connectivity, were rendered obsolete. And this industry is still reeling as a result. Different companies have responded to this threat in different ways. Some have continued with business as usual, maybe tweaking a little bit here and there, but not really addressing the challenge. Some have discontinued making printers altogether, resolving that if they can't beat them, they should just join them and instead create successful accessories and upgrades for the whole Bamboo Lab ecosystem. Still, many companies have taken the challenge head on, trying to create their own versions of Bamboo Lab-like printers at an equal or even lower price with what I would summarize as very low, low or moderate levels of success. All the while, Bamboo Lab hasn't held still, moving the mark and releasing new and even more affordable printers faster than even their most well-funded competitors can replicate them. And yet, there is a third category of company, a category that has taken a completely different track. Instead of joining the race to the bottom and trying to out bamboo bamboo, this category of company has gone after a totally different market segment, the Voron segment. You see, just a few short years ago, owning a Voron meant spending weeks self-sourcing parts, not to mention printing and assembling everything. Then, with the arrival of ready-made kits from companies like LDO Motors, sourcing became easy. You just had to print all the parts and spend 40 plus hours building the printer itself. And that has been successful. LDO alone has sold something like 10,000 Voron kits in the last few years, and companies like Fizek, Formbot, and Cybor, and many, many more probably aren't that far behind. But now, Sovel has dropped its own atomic bomb on the 3D printing industry, the SV08. So what is the SV08? Well, at first glance, it's a Voron 2.4. If instead of off-the-shelf parts, you use the same types of industrial large-scale manufacturing techniques that make Bamboo Lab printers possible and affordable. Custom machined aluminum frame, high quality injection molded parts, purpose-built electronics, and of course, a combination of 90% pre-assembly in China mixed with an ingenious design that allows this massive 350 millimeters cube build volume to be flat packed and shipped around the world. But that's just at the surface level. And we're going to get into some of the more nuanced and surprising features in just a second when we compare the final product to a built Voron 2.4. But first, I wanna ask, is this ethical? 
I mean, one of the biggest criticisms levied at Bamboo Lab is that they admittedly learned a lot from the open source community, particularly the Voron project, and then they put it into their own proprietary closed source printer, some people say without giving much of anything back to the community. Now, I don't want to take a side in that debate or comment on it in this video, but I will say that when I had the express privilege of previewing the early prototypes of the SVO8 during my trip to China back in September, this is one of the primary concerns that I raised with Sovol. To my relief, they were already well aware of the implications of building upon an open source project like the Voron 2.4. And even at that early stage of the product development, they already assured me that everything about the SVO8, the hardware, the software, the changes they've made in the firmware, it's all going to be 100% open source to give it back to the community. But since then, they've actually gone a step further. Sovol has actually pledged to donate $2 back to the Voron project for each and every SVO8 they sell to support further development of future Voron machines. That might not seem like a lot, $2, but first, wait till you hear the price of the printer. And second, keep in mind that the Voron 2.4 is itself completely open source. As long as they publish their designs as open source and refrain from using the trademark Voron, companies like Sovol are well within their rights to commercialize the design however they want, and they are under no obligation to support the project financially, which I think makes it even cooler when they do. But what about the whole proprietary parts thing? I mean, at least with a Voron 2.4, you can get or print readily available replacement parts if you need them. With this, a lot of the parts are injection molded, CNC machined, or made of sheet metal. Well, that's where this video's sponsor, PCBWay, could easily help. Whether you need something CNC machined, injection molded, MJF 3D printed, or maybe you wanna design your own PCBs to replace the stock tool head board. No matter the challenge or the quantity, they've got you covered. With their affordable pricing, flexible order quantities, and fast turnaround, PCBWay makes it easy to get professionally manufactured parts for any upgrade or project. When you combine that with the fact that the SV08 is fully open source, I envision that it's going to be very easy for anyone out there to create their own, say, custom PCBs or CNC machine parts or even upgraded tool head designs. And another thing that I love about PCBWay is that if you design something, say an improved tool head cover for the SV08 and then print it out of MJF nylon, you can then upload that design to their project marketplace and anytime someone orders that design, you get 10% commission. PCBWay is a longtime supporter of the channel and I use them for my own projects. So to check them out and get a $5 registration bonus on your first order, visit the link in the description or go to jle.vi slash PCBWay today. So with the ethical and upgradability concerns effectively squashed, let's kick back and talk specs and performance. And as I go along, I do think that it might be very interesting to compare the SVO8 to my top-of-the-line custom-built Voron 2.4 by LDO Motors. For build volume, the SV08 delivers 350 by 350 by 350, which is actually about 10 to 25 millimeters more on Z than the Voron 2.4. Like the Voron 2.4, it offers a full AC-powered heat bed, linear rails, connectivity, clipper, quad gantry leveling, you know the deal. As for flow rate, temperatures, and all of the hot end related stuff, that's really going to depend on what kind of hot end you have on the Voron 2.4 you're comparing it to. The SV08 though, ships with a 0.4 millimeter nickel plated proprietary bamboo style hot end capable of delivering about 25 cubic millimeters a second using standard polymaker polylite PLA at 220C or about 27 cubic millimeters before defects really become noticeable using Creality's Hyper PLA also at 220C. These results do put it behind the results that I've achieved with the Fetus Rapido on my 2.4 or E3D's Revo High Flow and the Bamboo Lab clone hot end with CHT nozzle I've tested in the past. It is, however, comparable to a stock Bamboo Lab 0.4 millimeter hot end. The top temperatures are 100C for the bed and 300 for the hot end. And this is just enough 
for printing pretty much any material you might want to, from ABS and ASA all the way to nylon and polycarbonate. However, unlike the Voron 2.4 kit, which ships with acrylic panels, in order to actually print those, you are going to need to add on side panels, which are currently in development and will be available for later upgrade in the coming months. As for cooling, the SV08 makes use of both a massive 5020 blower inside the tool head, plus an extra 4010 blower hanging out the back. So it should theoretically offer superior cooling over the Voron Stealth Burner tool head. Do drop me a comment below if you would like to see me run some comparison tests in a future YouTube short. As for the interface, it's the same monochrome LCD and click wheel that the standard Voron 2.4 kits ship with. Except in the case of the SV08, it does come ready with an HDMI plug, so you will be able to quickly and easily swap out the LCD for an HDMI touchscreen, which will also be available for purchase shortly after launch. Then there are a few things that the Voron 2.4 doesn't have. Things that are kind of a pain in the butt to install after the fact, and which honestly kind of date the 2.4 design. First, there's the camera, which is greatly appreciated, although the quality of it does mean that it's kind of more appropriate for remote monitoring than for churning out beautiful time lapses. Second, there's the filament runout sensor. Yes, you heard that right. For some reason, the original Voron 2.4 does not include a filament runout sensor. Adding one in isn't a big deal, you can get the BTT SFS, but it is an added expense and time investment to install it and configure it. Finally, we have little quality of life improvements that are missing altogether on the 2.4. The SV08, for example, features strong handles built directly into the base of the printer, making it much easier to move around than the Voron 2.4, which you cannot grab from the skirts on the bottom. The tool head cover is magnetically attached for easy access. The bed has little alignment tabs in the back corners. The tool head features an ADXL accelerometer built right into the board for resonance compensation purposes. It uses canvas, which makes it more expandable and will make things a lot easier should you have wiring issues in the future. There's even a silicone brush for cleaning the nozzle before prints. And Clipper has already been upgraded out of the box with adaptive meshing, Kaya, time lapses, and more, making this a whole lot more plug and play than any Voron build I've done. I may love the process of the mechanical build of building a Voron, but one part that I always dread is configuring and customizing the firmware and flashing the MCU and getting everything to talk to each other. I don't like that part. In fact, on that note, I think it's worth talking about the setup process and comparing it to the Voron 2.4. Because honestly, specs wise, this thing is literally just a Voron 2.4 and you can even use the same slicing profiles on it. The big, big difference is ultimately going to be in the build quality, which we've talked about, and in the build process. To be clear, there are a lot of benefits to a completely custom open source build like the Voron. First, you get the opportunity to individually choose each component to suit your needs and preferences, from the hot end to the type of bed pro, the size of the machine, and even the colors of the printed parts. With the SV08, while I'm sure that there will eventually be a thriving aftermarket, at least out of the box, you're kind of stuck with the colors and configurations that they've chosen for you. Second, I do think it's important to acknowledge that anyone who chooses to build a Voron up until this point is likely not doing it to save time or money. Building a Voron is a project in itself, a labor of love that really doesn't make sense unless you enjoy the process. And personally, I really do. Building a Voron allows you to learn the ins and outs of 3D printers and is an extremely rewarding experience that will give you pride every single time you look at the machine. But it also takes 40 plus hours of mechanical assembly if you don't make mistakes. Combine that with 100 plus hours of printing and a handful of hours compiling, configuring, and customizing the firmware. With the SV08, you get a printer that just works right out of the box. Setting it up took me less than an hour, and that includes taking it apart and reassembling one of the Z-axes because I'd pinched a wire. Each of those Z-axes assemblies is already built with the steppers and the belts pre-assembled and tensioned. All you need to do is bolt them on with 
five or six screws of various sizes. Then you simply rest the flying gantry on top, bolt that down and connect each of the connectors for all of the electronics. To be completely honest, before the SV08 showed up, I was considering building another Voron, perhaps a Trident, since I've actually gotten rid of a few of my larger printers around here, and a couple different companies have offered me their 2.4 kits to try out for free. But after a week of playing with the SV08, I honestly don't think that I personally can justify investing the time in building another Voron. And I suspect that a lot of people out there who've maybe been on the fence about wanting to build a Voron, but have been held back by just the sheer time investment are gonna feel the same way. And again, just wait until you hear the price. But before we get into that, and I promise we will in just a second, let's talk a bit about print quality. Though I will say, because this machine runs fully open source Clipper, gives you full control over filament and print profiles, and unlike say a Bamboo Lab machine, actually lets you tweak things like resonance compensation and print macros, any discussion of print quality is a little bit superfluous. The print quality of this machine ultimately is going to be as good as the profiles and configurations that you run on it. Because the hardware is essentially a Bamboo Lab clone hot end on a Voron 2.4 platform, we know it's capable of great quality fast. The question is how perfect the profiles are going to be. For my part, I tested the early Orca Slicer printer profiles that were supplied to me by Sobel and found them to be just fine. I experienced a little bit of stringing, which could be a filament moisture problem, or could just mean that retraction isn't quite dialed in on these pre-release profiles. I also had a pretty significant issue with the nozzle knocking over delicate things like supports. Funny enough, this is actually something that I experienced on my Voron 2.4 early on, and I was able to resolve it really easily by just increasing the Z-hop. So I do recommend that Sobel do that, and again, have a look at the retraction settings in the profiles that they ship with the final printers. Still, as you can see, even with the pre-release profiles, this printer is more than capable of churning out beautiful aesthetic parts. And I imagine with more testing and tweaking of those profiles, it's really only going to get better. With that said, it's not perfect. No printer is. And there are a number of things that I really don't like about the SV08. The first is the nozzle. I understand that more and more companies from Comgrow and Creality to now Sobel are coming out with their own proprietary nozzle types in order to achieve superior performance or quick swappability. But personally, and I've said this a few times before now, as someone who already has a huge collection of nozzles, including some very expensive and high quality diamond ones, I would have really preferred if Sobel could have just found a way to make a V6 or V6 Volcano nozzle compatible with this printer as they did with the SV07 and the SV07 Plus. Now, if I want to switch to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, I'm going to have to wait for those to become available for this printer and buy them directly from Sobel. And while I appreciate them for using nickel plated copper instead of just brass, and including a spare nozzle so that I can print carbon fiber composites. If I do want to upgrade to something like a higher flow CHT nozzle or a much more abrasion resistant diamond nozzle, I'm probably gonna be out of luck because I find it really unlikely that Bontech or Diamondback are gonna invest time and money to develop nozzles for a proprietary design. So hey, Sovol, if you guys are listening, please consider giving us a V6 adapter like Prusa does for this printer. Oh, and please, please, with a printer of this size, if you're going to include an extra nozzle in the box, make the second one a 0.6 millimeter. In fact, while I'm making requests, I'd rather that you install the 0.6 from the factory and give me a 0.4 extra in the box. Then there's the noise. This machine is loud. The stepper motors whine when it's moving quickly. And that huge part cooling fan is quite loud too. But because you probably won't hear it as much if and when you add an enclosure, that probably won't bother you nearly as much as the control board fan, which is loud, high pitched and always on. To be fair, my LDO Voron 2.4 also makes a horrible loud whine. It sounds like a jet engine when the board fans run, but at least on that, the fans only run when you're heating the bed or the hot end. 
Now I understand that the SV08 is too big to be a desktop printer and it's therefore unlikely to be sitting right next to you, but the sound of this fan is so obnoxious that I don't even really like to be in the same room with it. And because that's under the printer, it is not going to be improved by an enclosure like the motor wine or the cooling fan will be. Hopefully that's something that Sobel can fix before they go into mass production, but in case they don't, I would say that the first upgrade that any of you should make on this machine should be a Noctua fan for that control board. Hey, editing Jonathan here. Hang on. Much better. One thing I want to bring up that a lot of us reviewers are coming up upon is there does seem to be an issue with the Z offset and the probe somehow adjusting or being heat sensitive. I've been able to overcome it by heat soaking this printer before I print. I also don't shut my printers off, so I just keep the same Z offset. It is something also that I believe Sovel should be able to fix in the actual firmware. It has something to do with not compensating for the heat, but um, it's not a major deal. Just make sure that you heat soak the printer. Otherwise, your Z offset is going to change every single time you print. Hopefully, that'll be fixed by the time this thing launches. It's just one of those things that we encounter as testers when the printer hasn't been out in the wild yet. While I did not share this script or video with Sovel before release, I have forwarded each of those pieces of feedback to them in hopes that they can either make changes before release or in some of the cases, release upgrade parts to address those complaints later down the line. Now that we understand the good and the bad, let's get to the part that you've all been wondering. The price. A 350 millimeter Voron 2.4 is going to cost you anywhere from $1,100 to $1,670 with printed parts and acrylic panels. And that still doesn't include the little things like a camera or the filament runout sensor that you might want to add on to this. The SV08, though, doesn't even cost half of that. The SV08, when it goes on sale, will have a retail price of which is pretty good, but the first 800 users are going to receive bringing the price down to just and the next 700 users, they're still going to get meaning that the price will be only Oh, and in case you're wondering, the panels, which are going to be a must if you do want to print ABS, ASA, nylon, polycarbonate, those are going to be released later and they're going to cost between $100 and $150, including shipping. That isn't cheap, but if it includes some kind of solution for activated charcoal filtration or something like that, I do think it's going to be well worth it. Then again, if you only plan to print PLA and PETG, definitely save your money and just run the printer like this. Now, look, I'm aware that being the first to release this video and then earning a commission on anyone who pre-orders is a massive conflict of interest. But with that said, I do want to try to remain objective enough to answer the question you're probably thinking. Should you buy it? Well, first I'll say that even at this thing is a steal of a deal considering it comes fully built and both the size and the performance of the machine. Comparable large enclosed Core XY machines cost significantly more, even when you factor in the additional cost for the panels. And those generally don't have fully open source hardware and therefore are significantly less upgradable. And I genuinely think that if you're considering building a Voron 2.4, you might want to reconsider it unless you're actually looking forward to the build experience or that extreme level of customizability. And historically, I've always thought very highly of Sovel and their machines. They've always had a fantastic level of quality. They stay true to their open source commitment. And I've put a ton of hours on my SV07 and SV07 Plus, both with no issues whatsoever. So the prospect of them bringing their quality, expertise, and ethos to a large format Core XY printer is a pretty irresistible one for me. But there are a few things that you need to consider. At 55 by 55 by 57 centimeters, not including the spool holder, this is a big printer, and not everyone is going to have the space to actually house it. It's also, as I mentioned, noisy. And unless that improves with the enclosure, I really don't see you wanting this anywhere near where you're going to be spending a lot of time. 
Additionally, while this machine is probably going to be very, very customizable given that it's open source hardware, if you're a purist and you want a printer that is built predominantly of off the shelf and readily available parts, rather than potentially having to rely on one company for replacements, then this might not be the absolute best printer for you. It's also not the fastest printer out there. Its massive size plus the lack of an auxiliary cooling fan mean that if you're looking to churn out 12 minute benches or the fastest possible prototypes, you might still wanna get an X1 Carbon. Lastly, it is important to acknowledge that there is an increasing trend towards multicolor printing. And while it probably will be possible to later retrofit an open source enraged rabbit carrot feeder onto this printer, if you're interested in multicolor printing, you'd just be better off picking up a setup that already has an integrated material switching solution right out of the box. With all those caveats though, this is a great machine at a great price. And given that Sovol is playing by the rules when it comes to open source and contributing back to the Voron project, I personally think it's really, really cool that people can now enjoy Voron level performance and build volume without having to spend Voron level time or money. And more than anything, I think it's really, really refreshing to see a company that isn't trying to churn out yet another 250 by 250 Bamboo Lab clone and has actually forged a new path, strategically speaking, to serve an underserved segment of the market. So if you're in the market for a large format, open source printer that just works out of the box with an hour or less of setup, I can say that so far I am really loving the Sovol SV08 and I can easily give it my recommendation. Of course, if any of that changes as I get more hours on the printer or if I encounter any problems, I will let you guys know via community posts or YouTube shorts. So do make sure that you're subscribed and that you've clicked the bell icon to ensure that you don't miss out. And I'd love to hear in the comments below, are you as impressed with this machine and its price as I am? Officially, the SV08 will go on sale on April 18th, and I think that if you compare it to the other options at this build volume, this printer is a great buy, even if you end up paying retail price. So there you have it, my review of one of the most exciting printers that I've been keeping secret since my trip to China last year. I wanna give a huge thank you to Sovol for allowing me to be one of the first, if not the first to release my video on this printer and for their continued support and collaboration with this channel and with the wider 3D printing community. Let me also take a moment to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters, particularly our Nylon and Peak members, Chip Cox, Two Crazy Kiddos, Amir Hen, and Chris Miller. You guys rock, and for any of you who wanna hear your name in the video, get exclusive behind the scenes content, or just see your name on my wall of fame, make sure to check out the links in the description. That's all for this week, but I'll see all of you on the next layer.